morning, everyone. I now invite Mrs. Quinn Boyer to welcome us to our Advent celebration. Welcome to the Dennis Morris Catholic School Advent Liturgy. When we enter into Advent, the church's four-week preparation for Christmas, we are stepping into a long line of people waiting for the coming of our Savior. The first people were the Old Testament prophets who kept vigil for the fulfillment of God's promise to restore his people and bring his reign on earth. The prophet Isaiah asked that we prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist, the last and greatest prophet, was standing watch when that long-awaited moment arrived, demanding that we repent and prepare our hearts to welcome Christ the Messiah. Jesus' birth changed everything, but we are still on the watch. During Advent, we join with the people from around the world waiting for the Savior with eager anticipation. Looking to the future, we prepare our hearts to welcome our Lord again, not just at Christmas, but when he returns in glory. Christ has come, Christ will come again. This is the true spirit of Advent. Advent is a season to prepare, to slow down during this frantic time and to teach us to act simply so we can fully share in the joy and peace that only the birth of a baby can bring. May you all be blessed this Advent with the peace of Christ and may your hearts be abundantly filled with the love of God as we enter into the Christmas season. This morning, our celebrant is Father Greg Schmidt and will be assisted by Deacon Jack Giroux. We thank them both for their dedication to our Dennis Morris family and for always being available to serve the needs of our community. My dear community, all of those joining me here in the church, I invite you to stand. <clears throat> captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O oh, come, O oh, wisdom from on high, who order all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in your ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. My friends, we begin our celebration with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. It is good for us to be here together, whether we are here in the church in person or joining us virtually through our classrooms. It is a joy that we can come together to celebrate this great celebration during the season of Advent. The season of Advent is a gift that we have been given, and it's a gift that we can stop and pause in the busyness of our day to gather around this altar, again, whether in person or virtually, to offer all of our prayers and petitions and to lift them up to our God. And now, so that we may enter into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, asking for God's pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite everyone to be seated. I invite Luke to come forward for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy. The heathens themselves said, what marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who were sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. I invite everyone to stand. 
straight his paths all people shall see the salvation of God hallelujah hallelujah the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord Jesus asked his disciples what do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I invite everyone to be seated. Dominus Fobiscum. That's the extent of my Latin and the, the Latin that you'll hear at St. Julius here. But Dominus Fobiscum means the Lord be with you. And it's how we open this Mass today. And it's with a great sincerity in my heart and with the heart of every priest that when we open the celebration of the Mass, we say the Lord be with you. And that we respond and with your spirit that the Lord truly, truly dwells in you. When we look at Dominus, Dominus means Lord. And if we go one step further, we can say Dominus will lead us to dominant. I guess the question for us here is, is Christ, our Lord, the dominant force in your life? When we make decisions, are we including our Lord Jesus Christ in those decisions? And saying, what would Jesus do in this situation here, in this encounter with our parents, in this encounter with our teachers, with our mentors, with our fellow classmates, with that stranger on the street. It's a beautiful opportunity for us to reflect. How are we acting? How are we being guided here on earth? Because as I said before, we're all in this together and we're helping one another get to that ultimate destination of heaven. And when we have that opportunity to come here, whether it be in person for our weekday masses or a mass like this, there's something very, very dominant behind me, and that is the crucifix. And when you come into our weekday masses, you know I keep the lights a little bit dim so that there is that, there's, there's no doubt, I want you to look at one thing and one thing alone, and that is the crucifix behind me and what Jesus Christ did for each and every one of us. Whether we are Catholic or not, Jesus came for each and every one of us, and that's so very, very important. So the question is, is Jesus the dominant force in your life? And I think our gospel is so very, very appropriate that it asks us the question, when I maybe stray, when I wander off, is God coming after me? And the answer is absolutely yes. When we wander off, and I've wandered as in my life as well, because the reality is we are all people of this world. We don't live in a monastery. We don't live with taking a vow of silence. We're people of this world. And there's many, many forces in our life that can draw us in different directions. I pray that when we do have those opportunities in our lives, to hear different voices and different opinions, different things that are taking place, that we're reminded that there's one dominant voice, and that is the voice of Jesus Christ. We've been given a gift here to be here at Dennis Morris Catholic High School and to nurture and to guide and to form each and every one of you. And we take that with great, great pride, and it's a great privilege. That includes your parents, your grandparents, your godparents, your teachers, your support staff, principals, chaplains, all of those influential figures in your life and how are they planting seeds along the way and guiding you but truth be told you're guiding one another as well and you're helping guide me at the same time when we come for our celebration of the mass i see that opportunity for us to sit and just be still when else do you have that opportunity to sit and just be still and to reflect upon something greater something bigger and that is our relationship with jesus christ and once again whether we are Catholic or not, God pulls at the heartstrings of each and every one of us. And I pray that these are opportunities for us to think of that bigger picture and to think that there's more than this life. There's ultimately life, eternal life in heaven. And it's, this is what it's all about. In the season of Advent, we shed the spotlight on preparing 
and we're given this gift of these four weeks in the season of Advent to prepare not only for that first coming of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago, but for the second coming of Christ that we pray for at each and every Mass. But then there's that preparing as well for when we are called home to our eternal home, that final preparation when Jesus comes and prepares us and swoops us up and takes us to our eternal home in heaven. That's the bigger picture of what this season of Advent is all about. But in our hearts, we know that the great focus is on that birth of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ came into our world to save each and every one of us all out of love. And what the message is of Jesus' um, passion, death, and resurrection and his life here on earth, we are reminded of these candles on the Advent wreath. That Jesus came to bring hope to all of those that may be wandering, that may be lost, and that have sinned. There's that hope that we can turn to God at any time asking for forgiveness. We are people of peace, and Jesus came to bring peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And how many of us don't want peace in our families, in our school, in our community, and in our world? I pray that that's in the very depths of your heart, to pray for peace each and every day, and to be an instrument of peace in our midst. Then we are reminded of joy, and that during this season of Advent, we're reminded that we're leading up to a great, great celebration of Christmas and the joyous birth of Jesus Christ. And to be people of joy in the midst of the good times and the bad, we know those people in our life that have faced challenges, and yet somehow they continue to be people of joy. That's because they are grounded in that relationship with Jesus Christ. I know them, and I pray that you have encountered them as well. And then that ultimate gift of love, that Jesus died on the cross out of love for each and every one of us. And that it's that love that we can experience in our families and in our community, and being kind to our neighbor. No one needs to say the words, I love you, but it's through our words and deeds and actions that we can express that love for one another. And I will say, I'll correct myself, it is nice to hear those words, I love you as well, from a family member, from someone who that might not use the words, I love you, but we know through their actions and deeds that there is that expression of love. And that's what this season is all about. Hope, peace, joy, and love. And I pray that whenever you celebrate Mass and come to join me for the celebration of Mass or your home parish, that you leave with that sense of peace in your heart. So I ask you again, and I ask myself again, is Jesus Christ the dominant force in your life? When you have important decisions to make, do you turn to God and say, you know, God, I need your help with this. Help to illuminate for me the right decision. And if we have wandered off, may we be pulled back home to that relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are have wandered away or if you're going through a difficult time right now just give it an opportunity give it a chance to put jesus as that dominant force in your life and if you open your hearts to make that commitment to allow christ to work in your heart it can transform your life and that's what i want for you this day if you can come to that realization while you're in high school it will set you up for a lifetime of success and those graces that are shared when we share in that divine life of christ what I want for you. It's what your parents want for you. It's what your teachers and mentors and all of those that are important in your lives want for you. And I pray in the depths of your hearts that you want this for yourself as well. When we unite all of these prayers together, unbelievable and miraculous things can happen. Supernatural things can happen. And that's when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So as we continue our celebration today, as we continue to journey through this season of Advent together, may we truly prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. And may we turn to God asking for that help and assistance that only he can provide. And may he be the dominant force in your life to allow that transformation to take place this day. May God bless you. At this time, I invite Valentina to come forward to lead us in our prayers of the faithful. And I invite everyone to stand. Longing for the day when the Lord will come again, we speak our needs to our gracious God. The response is, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. That Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over it always. We pray to the Lord. Come Lord Jesus. That every nation prepare now for the day of Christ's birth by working for peace and the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Come Lord Jesus. 
that the Dennis Morris family seek meaningful ways to prepare for the Lord's coming. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. That those who are estranged from their families may be reconciled this Advent season. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. That the sick, especially those near death, feel God's compassion in the loving hand of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. That those who have gone before us, especially members of our family, will receive eternal life in the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. And we pray for those who have maybe been lost or have gone astray. May they know that they have that beautiful relationship with Jesus Christ and that they can turn to Christ any time through the power of prayer. And may they know of the prayers and support of this community. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. And for the many prayers and petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy One, we are impatient for the coming of your Son. Help us to receive him with open hearts. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite everyone to be seated. everyone to stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to please our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For all those with me in the church, I invite you to kneel.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Julia, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And I invite everyone to stand. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now think of that someone who needs that peace of Christ in their heart this day. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. I invite everyone to kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of us at school, in our classrooms, we make our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
invite everyone to stand. And let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite Mr. Galtieri to come forward to close us out with some final remarks. Good morning. During this busy holiday season, taking the time to sit, pray, and reflect is especially important for us as we wait and hope for the birth of Jesus. Thank you to our readers, Luke and Valentina. Thank you to Mrs. Seferetti Roy and Mr. Belanowski and their students for their reverence and respect. Thank you to Chaplain Patricia, and especially a tremendous thank you to Father Greg for taking this time and sharing the gift of our faith with the students and staff of Dennis Morris Catholic High School. On behalf of Mrs. Quinn Boyer, Mrs. McKinley and I, we wish you all a blessed Advent and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Well, it's always my pleasure and joy for us to come together for these Masses, and I'm so grateful that we're so close that you're able to join me for our weekday Masses as well. As we continue to journey through the season of Advent, I want you to know of my prayers, and looking forward to the Christmas season, we all come from different home parishes, but I want you to know that the doors of St. Julie are open to each and every one of you. We have Masses Christmas Eve at 5 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10 p.m., and then Christmas Day on ni at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., it's a beautiful opportunity for you to come with your family, to simply come together as a family as, and as part of a bigger family to realize there are so many, many important things in our lives and our faith is one of the most important things and it's a gift that we have been given together as a community. So I wish you many, many blessings as we continue to prepare for that great celebration of Christmas. And I wish you all a grace-filled and peace-filled day. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless each of you and those that you love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Let the valleys be raised and the mountains made low, every meadow and field overturned. Make the pathway straight and the highway run smooth for the coming of God in our day. God, you come to your people as you promised of old. You have raised up a Savior in the sight of us all. Let the valleys be raised and the mountains made low, every meadow and field overturned. Make the pathway straight and the highway run smooth for the coming of God in our day.